Ciao everyone and welcome back to Growth Talks. I'm Raf, your host, and my guest today is Enrico Tartarotti. Hi, Hi Enrico. Hi How everyone. Are you? Hi everyone. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, super excited um, for, for, for this one. Um, uh, I'm, I'm loving the uh, what you're doing on you, your YouTube channel. Uh, so I really uh, want to have a chance to talk with you about your experience and, and the, 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 all the nice things that you are doing on YouTube right now. But you know, before doing that, um, we usually start this conversation here uh, with a with a simple question. So, uh, who's Enrico? Uh, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, what's your story? It's a good question. Um, so, who's Enrico? Um, I would say a uh, tech guy, if I have to sum it up very, 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 very much. Uh, but basically, yeah, so I work in tech and I have a YouTube channel as a product manager. Um, and, I, and I have a YouTube channel where I talk about technology and behind the scenes of tech and psychology design and basically anything that I find interesting in the world of tech, I try to, to, bring, to bring it to a fairly mainstream audience. So in simple terms with kind of a different spin and a different take on things. Uh, I try to bring stuff that is not in the narrative uh, the, of, of what I see personally online and where I think I can bring some interesting viewpoints. So yeah, uh, there's there's that. Uh, I can give you more info on my background if you want. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah, 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 let's do that. Yeah, yeah. I've, wow. I've, uh, I've been living uh, in London for one year now uh, before I was in Italy, I'm Italian. Um, I studied engineering at Politecnico di Milano in Milan. I was living in Milan as well before. Uh, I was working at Amazon. And I've done all sorts of things throughout my uh, the last 10 years from working in uh, all sorts of jobs, restaurants, whatever, uh, all sorts of side hustles. And now my thing uh, outside my main job is YouTube, uh, which I'm very excited to talk about today and uh, share a bit more about my experience in the world of YouTube and content creation and uh, anything that comes with it. Uh, when, when did you start uh, on YouTube? Uh, when and, and also why uh, mm. did you start making videos? Uh, so this is actually, um, there's two times where I started. One, once was in 2009. Oh, <laughs> My wow. YouTube channel is like, what, 15, 16 years old now. Uh, basically I was making videos about like Minecraft gameplays and Call of Duty gameplays and stuff like that in Italian. I had like, I was in high school. I had like 200 subscribers, uh, some reviews of games. And then I kind of stopped. It was like a very, you know, teenage um periods so just yeah just randomly making videos then I, then i kind of stopped and then i restarted in 2020 uh late 2020 we're making videos in italian as well uh at the beginning it was really anything my first videos was about my first solo trip that i did in france uh and then all sorts of things second video was about social media third video was about synthetic meat <laughs> really anything um then after a year of that i kind of decided to i still had like 800 subscribers, so pretty small. I kind of made a big switch to English. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna focus on tech. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to English. Um, we can dive more into your language. Your if you're not a native English speaker versus in doing stuff in English, but because I know you you do a lot of Italian versus English content as well. Um, but I took that switch, and now it's been two years. Yeah, I would say two. Yeah, two years and a half, I guess uh two -ish years where i'm making content about mostly technology and various facets of it um this year has been going pretty well uh it's the typical you know uh hockey stick um exponential growth so this year was the year of that uh, so really happy for that and um yeah i'm just keep making videos uh, and uh Glad to talk about it more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I want to go back to the why um, and focus on the uh, last time you started. So you said that you actually started three times. So let's focus on the last one. So the one in uh, 2021, uh, when you decide to make content in English and also to focus on the whole, uh, you know, tech world, social media, technology, yeah. um, and, and, and everything else. Uh, I want to go back to the why. So why did you, why did you start? Um, I mean, you had a job, uh, let's say a, a normal job, 
uh, what was the reason, the main reason that brought you to, you know, content creation and the idea of sharing with others, you know, with people um, that, you know, that topic, so technology and everything behind it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good point. Actually, I mentioned I started two times, but you're right. I started three times because I would consider restarting again, you know, switching to English and uh, uh, finding a focus there. But yeah, so... I feel like at first I was always a big consumer of YouTube. I feel like you really need to be a consumer of the platform that you want to create content in, or at least be passionate about it. I don't feel like, hey, I just gonna start a YouTube channel and I never watched YouTube before, or hey, I'm gonna just start TikTok, or hey, I'm gonna start a podcast and I don't listen to podcasts. It's, it's pretty, it's not a great recipe for success in my opinion, um, unless you then decide to hire experts and it's always something you can do. But uh, for most people, it starts with being a consumer of the thing and then and then you switch to being a, a creator. So the why it's, so I had a few people, uh, a few friends of mine that had YouTube channels um, about photography, agriculture, and they, they were just, making videos in general in that space uh, with moderate, like decent success, like a couple uh, tens of thousands of uh, subscribers uh, in Italy. And um, yeah, I was always a big consumer of YouTube. And as I said, I did a first year where I did a bunch of videos uh, about really anything. So when you start, my suggestion would actually be just try out different things, not really for understanding what the audience likes because your audience will most likely be minuscule and not really an indication of, you know, what's the future of the channel or whatever their accounts, whatever that is, it's going to be. It's more for you. Like it, it's something that you should do for yourself. Try out different things, try out different formats, different types of videos to find out what is the thing that I would actually like to do for a long time and be happy to do for a long time and actually spend a lot of time and, uh, it's the thing that I would be excited to do, even though it's hard and it's not working, right? So I did a couple of travel videos and I, I like travel. I like making videos when I'm around and taking photos and things like that. I then realized, okay, maybe I did one or two, but it was nice, but that's not my thing. Uh, the thing that I always, that then I reflected on and was always uh, passionate about since, was, since I was a kid, basically it's um, tech, technology. So, and I feel like, I could sit here with you or with a friend of mine or with whoever and just have a random conversation for a couple of hours about what's happening in tech. And uh, it's just very natural for me because it's, it's, it's a topic that I'm passionate about. So I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm going to talk about. When it comes to the why, um, why should you sit in front of a camera and spend hours every night and every weekend making videos and also, you know, be subject to the judgment judgment of others, which is a big thing, especially as you're starting out. I, I, I'm not yet over the um, uh, feeling of being judged uh, when I'm when I'm putting out content or where somebody like the worst thing for me is when somebody like on a, on a, on, a, on, a, on a smart TV or whatever in some living room watches my channel at full volume. And it's like <laughs> the worst thing ever. Uh, so still I haven't got it past that. But um, yeah, to me it's. Not only sh th there's a kind of an external reason, like practically good reasons why you should do it. It brought me a lot of career opportunities. It allowed me to get, you know, on a very straightforward sense, financial benefits and uh, an extra income. Um, it allowed me to meet amazing people. And that's something like I'm, I met you through like YouTube and you, you found me because of my videos and uh, we met a few times. So it has a lot of kind of side benefits and those are more external in a way. Uh, but it, and we, I realized it like right from the start. So when I started, one of my goals was I want to meet interesting people. I want to use this as a way to, you know, being very honest, have a, an extra source of income and potentially give me extra opportunities and create more opportunities for me. And then there's sharing what is your viewpoint, like having a, a a way to kind of share what you believe in, share what you're passionate about, and in a way that's hopefully useful and interesting for others, right? So um, I am a big believer in technology as a net positive thing for humanity. 
and uh, uh, I'm saying net positive, not just positive. So there are definitely some some sides to consider. But uh, and I've seen a lot of negativity online uh, about tech and the impact of tech, and it, it, it seems like that is the main narrative. So on my channel, I want to bring a more optimistic and solution driven, not just hey, here's our problems about tech approach uh, to um, to what I'm seeing. Also leveraging on my experience, right? So I have my experience as a product manager. I've I've dabbled in the field of tech uh, for a long time. So um, yeah, it's a, it, it's a mix of both, right? So uh, an internal willingness to share what what is your viewpoint, what is uh, so, some thoughts and some ideas that I might be speaking with friends at the bar. Now I can just explain them in a also in a different ways, and it allows me to. Um, to use to use and improve with storytelling, uh, but and also on a, on an external motivation front, there is many benefits like meeting incredible people, getting to do incredible experiences, and yeah, building an income and like it really 10x the number of opportunities that I'm getting in all sorts of fronts uh, yeah. of uh, of life. I I totally agree on both of them, and I think the the external one is. Uh, I think maybe it's the hardest one to understand. I mean, if you don't do that, uh, if you're not a creator, but actually there is like a, I don't know how to call it, but there is like a, an exposure effect that is so powerful. The moment you put your voice out there, you have so many opportunities. Uh, and this is, this is incredible. Um, you said something really interesting uh, when you said that you wanted to tell your point of view. Uh, and you said that twice at the beginning, uh, you said that you wanted to say something that was not, you know, in the mainstream narrative. And now you just said, uh, I, I'd like to bring my point of view, uh, about tech. Uh, why do you think that's important? And what do you mean by, you know, this is not in the mainstream, uh, narrative about tech. So I feel like we are all very influenced by the type of media we consume right so especially if i'm not so deep into a topic like let, let's stop let's take as an example something that i'm mildly interested in like watches i like watches i have uh, like mechanical watches uh i'm not an expert i'm not i'm not super into it i don't work in the industry so i rely on what i hear about the world of watches to kind of guide my taste, my ideas, my opinions on certain brands or, you know, uh, or, or, or what's going on in this space. And this media I consume as a, you know, as I cannot have an opinion on my own because I'm not so deep into the topic. These other people that are in that space or that, or there are um, creators in that space or that are sharing information, videos, whatever that is about that space, kind of drive my view about the world of watches and what's happening in watches, right? So I want, what I notice about the tech world is that whenever I was talking with somebody that is not in the tech space, and if you are in the tech space, I really hope that you know, <laughs> you are uh, you're optimistic about the tech space. It doesn't it wouldn't make sense to work in an industry where you're you're like this is all evil, right? So most of people that are not in the tech space, uh, w whenever I started a conversation, they were like, "Oh, but it's all about addiction and AI is gonna kill us all." And 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 I notice also online, especially on YouTube, given the negativity bias, this is very very common, very true, right? Uh, and uh, it's a narrative that I see time and time again. There are entire channels that are dedicated to spreading how this app is evil or this is going to enslave us all and, and all that. And I have noticed that, and for many people, since they're not into the tech world, this is the viewpoint that they're going to get, right? So if, if, if this is the main narrative and... Uh, this is the only thing that they'll be exposed to. So whenever they're going to talk to their family and friends about tech, that's it, right? That, that's the, 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 the thing that the, the opinion that is shaped around this, the whole world of tech or new products or AI or whatever that is. So, and I do believe that there's much more than that. And there's, and to me, again, 
technology and uh, digi the digital space as well is a net positive on humanity. And I really wanted to share that. Uh, so as if you notice on my videos, I also try to play on this. I try to play on this negativity bias. A lot of my videos start with a negative maybe packaging or outlook because that's what kind of, I, I want to draw these people in that are attracted to this negativity. But then during the video, if you notice, I always try to end either with a solution. So not with a problem, but with a solution to it. And, uh, or just give a different viewpoint, give a different perspective and bring it not only to the negative, but okay, if there's a problem, how do we solve this problem? Uh, so this is what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to do. And I'm still, you know, here trying different things with every video and uh i haven't you know i haven't uh i don't have it figured out so um but but this is one one important thing that's driving what i'm uh, what i'm doing and i noticed as well that you know it's not just about talking about technology but now i want to start talking more about even my journey because i feel like there's a lot of people that now ask me or dm me for just advice on how do you get a job in this or that or should i start a youtube channel or uh, i'm working on a project i'm working on a startup and getting some guidance on that and i feel like the more we at least for me the more we advance in life the more we kind of downplay the experience that we got like i'm 28 years old now and i and i have some experience so for uh right now i'm like oh yeah okay i have so much to learn but then for a you know 20 year old me that is watching a, that that uh that might be at a completely different stage in life i have so much to teach and so and i I'm, i've started to realize just in the last months how much i can share and that i thought i I thought I didn't, I, you needed to had to be like, you know, the, the Elon Musk of sorts to just share things and be the most, the foremost subject matter as, expert on whatever uh, to teach something. But in reality, you don't. Maybe I can give value to the to the person that is three or five or 10 years uh, behind me, like time-wise mm. in the journey. And uh, so I, I want to start doing more of that as well. And uh, I'm going to start doing it. Uh, in. I've done a few videos about uh about this and uh like offering what i've learned throughout my journey and i'm gonna do that more as well so not just talking about whatever's going happening in the world of tech but also bringing more of my experience into the into the channel and to what's happening uh, i think this is a very powerful idea and uh, i love the uh you know the main takeaway of that so that when we create content um there is always someone uh, with less experience than us, you know, someone that is kind of behind us and we have to think about them. Uh, every time we, I mean, for people that don't create content, most of the time they are like super scared of, you know, uh, what experts are going to think about me. Uh, but you are not creating content for experts. You are creating content for, you know, people that are still learning about it. And there's always someone that can, uh, you know, get something useful from, from that. And I think this is very, very uh powerful idea um your channel kind of exploded uh do you do you think there was like a, a video or maybe a, a few videos that you know were the uh the main cause of the exponential growth you told us before um i do not think there is one cause i feel like it's an accumulation of quality over time uh, that's how I, I like to frame it in my, maybe I'm wrong, right? But I'm just trying to analyze backwards what happened. So to me, so there was, there, there was a video, the one about ChatGPT and Microsoft that did really well. And that got like 800,000 views when my channel was very small, like a few thousand subscribers. And then, uh, from that one, a lot of people discovered another old video of mine, the one about Google search, which now is actually the most viewed one, like 2.3 million or something. Um, so one could, could say, Hey, like he made those two videos and that's, you know, those good videos made the, the, the big growth happen. I don't think that's really the case because these, and if anything serialized doesn't happen in a vacuum, uh, mm. It's not like I woke up one day. So if I didn't make anything before that point, 
and I woke up one day, I couldn't make those videos from, from starting from nothing, right? So it's, it's, it's the journey that brings you to that point. So I start, if I watch back on my first, if I look back on my first video, it's shit. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> and so every time it's like, okay, make, let's make it 5% five, five better. Let's focus on the editing. Let's try a different angle on the sub, on the topic and, and the family. And, and, and then you, you come to a point where uh, these things all add up. And I feel like for the, in order to really grow, you need to have the quality beforehand. You don't, you need to have a backlog of, of quality stuff that you have put out. Eventually, the algorithm or whatever is uh, the decider, usually the algorithm, will pick up and, uh, and, and, so, and, and things will happen. But there will be a point in time where you have put out stuff that it's high quality that is deserving of a hundred thousand, a million, whatever the, the, the benchmark is, views uh, or impressions. And and it will not be recognized and it will have a far, 100, a thousand, but it's there. It has the potential to do a hundred K or a million or it, 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 ha, it, it has, it deserves that. And once you put out one, two, three, four, five, so many of these, there will come a time where they, they will spike out of the noise and the, the algorithm will pick it up and the audience will realize it. And that's what's gonna create, uh, what's gonna create the growth. Also, like very scientifically speaking, if you are under, uh, under say, I don't know, on YouTube especially, uh, a thousand subscriber, you get like a couple hundred views per video, for every algorithm, it will be very hard, even if you have quality stuff to identify it because the data points are so low. So if you imagine uh, I, I am an algorithm and I have this video that is amazing and people are watching it, uh, are clicking on it because the thumbnail is insane and they're watching it till the end because it's just such an amazing video, but it's still at a hundred views per month. So it's gonna take like, the, for example, the click-through rate uh, data point is gonna jump so much up and down because you just, like I, today I show it to one person and maybe it clicks. Okay, if it clicks, it's 100%. So tomorrow I show it to two. And then one person clicks, one person doesn't. So it's 50%, so it kind of jumps all around. And it, there's a lot of just noise. There's just so much content uh, that is at that lower pool of like say under a thousand views. And with such low amounts of data, it's very hard for an algorithm to detect actual quality, even what quality is there, right? So I can imagine, so now if I uh, if I make a video and in the first, because, because I have a, a user base now, uh, a, a subscriber base, it gets shown to 10,000 people in the first, I don't know, 24 hours, uh, then it, it has much higher chance of actually growing to the point where it deserves in a way, because now the algorithm has much more data points to compare my videos. So for a Mr. Beast video, it's the extreme opposite, right? So I feel like that's th those are the two aspects. So you have to deserve the the level of success. Like your, your content has to deserve the level of success that it reaches. And there will be a point in time where you put out content that deserves a million and gets a hundred or a thousand. But if you do that enough times, then it will eventually be recognized because there's this noise. Eventually, at some point, it will come out of the noise. And also your backlog of catalog of quality stuff will now get recognized as well. And it kind of starts this chain reaction that it makes things uh, makes things grow. There are always exceptions, but this is kind of how I, how I see it in retrospect. It's kind of um, like buying a lottery tickets. So you don't know which one is going to be a, a, you know, a, a winner, but if you buy enough tickets, you know that you have you know so much more uh, you know probability to, to, to win something. And, and maybe with videos is the same. So if I put out just one video in a year and there is someone else that is making, I don't know, 10 videos or 50 videos, they have so many uh, you know chances to be uh, recognized from the algorithm. So the question is, how do we find the balance between quality and quantity? Because you said that quality is important, but you also have to work on it you know, and put out videos. Uh, how do you find the balance 
uh, how, how did you find the balance in your i mean your experience if you are enjoying this episode please check out my lead generation course you can watch it for free on gaito.link slash skillshare g-a-i-t Oh. As an entrepreneur, marketer or business owner, you know how crucial lead generation is. In this course, I'll be sharing with you 20 proven tactics for lead generation in both B2B and B2C markets. You can watch it for free on gaito.link slash Skillshare, G-A-I-T-O. You'll find the link in the description. I feel like you need to find what works for you. So usually what I see is two types of approaches. One is I have to make a video a week and the... the the constraint is on time. So a video week, it's gonna come out and it kind of motivates people to to, to show up and, and, and release and, and do whatever. Maybe it's a blog, it's a YouTube channel, TikTok, I have no idea, but there's kind of this uh, timely component. On YouTube, there's a lot of uh, focus on that, like a new video out every Thursday at seven or whatever. Um, for me, this doesn't work. I tried it when I had my channel in Italian and I ended up making videos that I was not proud of that I looking back they were not qualities quality videos uh, at the beginning it helps because it kind of keeps you in check and the first stuff you do is going to be shit anyways most likely so uh it kind of helps to get you through those I don't know first 10 videos or 20 uh then what worked for me is like okay this is uh, I don't want to put out stuff that I'm not proud of that in, in, in a few years, I'm going to hide from the channel because I'm just ashamed of it. Um, so I would much rather take my time and have the quality be the, the thing that I keep fixed and hopefully very high. And then the time it takes is the thing that varies. So if I'm able to create a quality video in three days, amazing. If it needs three weeks, cool. Fine. Uh, now, downside of this is, um, of course, that you need to be more disciplined because, uh, you know, you could say, "Oh, I'm going to take a year to make the next one," and that's not the the right approach as well. Um, but that's what worked for me. But it's not the only way. Like, it, 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 if you look at Casey Neistat, it's, it's been one of the most famous examples of the opposite. Like, you show up, you do a daily vlog, and it also depends on the meta of the platform at the time. Like YouTube in 2017, 18, the meta was the daily vlogs and uh, you got to upload constantly and you got to put out a lot of content every day. Uh, so that was also kind of a big trend on the platform. So it's also something to keep in mind. Today, I think quality and uh, really making the banger video every three months. If you look at the, you know, the Mr. Beast of sorts or the Mark Robbers that make a video a year, and it's a crazy wild thing. So that that seems to be more more the case. Everything is, is cyclical, so I, I guess someday we'll, we're gonna come back to uh, probably something that most is more on the lines of daily vlogging. Uh, not sure where it's gonna be, but. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's more about what works for you. There's no right or wrong, in my opinion. Like, there's a lot of people, especially with short form content, it's easier to do stuff that you know doesn't take three weeks to do. Uh, but maybe you can be the guy that takes three weeks to do a uh, sixty second shorts and and blows everyone out of the water, right? So it's uh, it's really about try. I would suggest try both. At the beginning, maybe try to get you know the some kind of time constraint. Uh, so that you just try it out and then see if it works for you. If, you, if you're if you happy with the content that you're putting out and you have a time constraint, then fine, fantastic. Uh, if not, like, like it happened for me, just focus on quality. And um, I would say the thing you need to be, to make sure of is to have systems that keep you in check, that keep you accountable and that keep you working on things. Like, again, again, I could spend a year on my next video. It's probably not going to be beneficial, though. And how how do you do that with yourself? How do you I don't know, do you use like a, a framework? Um, I don't know, time tracker, a to do list. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? I tried a lot of things. Like I tried for a period to do kind of half an hour blocks, and each week I, w I was going to do I don't know uh, twenty half an hour blocks, and this is my YouTube time, and, and I have to spread it throughout my week after work or in the weekends or at night or whatever. And then I would do uh, that. Didn't work for me, but maybe we'll, we'll work with someone else. For now, it's just 
I, I don't have a um, specific system that I, I would love to tell you there's a tracker and there's a <laughs> perfect setup that I use and, uh, and I share it for free on my newsletter or whatever. Turns out there's not. Um, I just, I'm now, I've now gotten used to you having YouTube out as the other thing outside work. So I know I will dedicate uh, time to, to, to make a video and, and I am motivated by, so I am motivated now, for example, by gr getting my channel to a more stable place because views are kind of all over the place. There have been millions of views. Now it's, it's a bit lower. So that's my goal. In the past, my goal was to grow out of the 1,000 subscriber, 300 views phase, right? So that's kind of my, my motivation. And um, there's that. And on a more practical, like, that's why also your why is important and uh, having a topic that you're passionate about is important. I'm also lucky that in tech stuff happens all the time. There's new releases all the time. So uh, it's not like that there's always something new happening. So I have new ideas for videos and I want to um, create more things. On a more practical note, I would say having a good note taking system uh, and like to do list organization system really helps for me. So because I have to do like, to do's and actions for work and for personal life and for YouTube. So what I usually end up doing is I kind of plan ahead. I have a, I use TickTick tick mostly. Um, I have it so that it's literally one tap with a widget on Android to add a new note uh, or a new to do. And so my to do can be, I don't know, write the, um, the packaging and the hook for the next video. Cool. So that's one. And then uh, I try to put, I, I'm not super rigid on days. So like I need to do it today or I need to do it tomorrow. Uh, I just try, try to add. So if, I, if, I, if I'm like, okay, this is the next video that's going to happen. I just write a few to do's for it. So like write the packaging, write the intro, and then I'm going to write the whole thing and then record it and then edit the first piece. So those are like five to do's. And I know when I open my to do app, which is every day, I have my work stuff, I have my personal stuff, and I have the stuff that is in there. So I just know that it exists and it needs to happen. Yeah. But it's not religious. Like it's not, if it doesn't happen today, I'm going to. I'm gonna die, right? So, um, and sometimes it's a, it's a challenge in the other way around. Sometimes it's a challenge to actually relax and not do uh, YouTube or uh, work on a video. And um, I actually bought a Nintendo Switch just for the purpose of forcing me to not work <laughs> some nights or not. Uh, I have a rule that I, I need to spend a day a week uh, just not doing, like just relaxing or just playing guitar or just, just going out for a run or whatever that is, uh, trying to 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 relax. Um, and yeah, it can also be it can also definitely take you in the other in the other direction. I feel like it's good to have some unbalance, like uh, not necessarily live the nine to five life. And I, I am a big believer that you should have something going on, uh, especially if you have a kind of a let's call it a normal job, uh, something going on as well. Uh, unless that job is like your ultimate, your you've achieved your dream, and it could, like hats off to you. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer in that, and sometimes it can actually take you in the opposite direction so too much focus too much yeah work. I, I i i totally agree on that <laughs> be careful with with fomo <laughs> um uh, enrico you said that you had tried uh, especially at the beginning you had tried uh, you know different um topics different approaches different kinds of videos uh what would you say what are the like the biggest mistake that you have made um in these whole YouTube experience and what did you learn from that? Not starting earlier, <laughs> probably my, I mean, uh, I, I don't like, you know, uh, I don't like regret. So, but, and this is definitely potentially a regret. Like if I started, I don't know, five years early, what could I have done? But, but I don't think it's also, I don't think it's a productive thought to have like, it is what it is now, now you're here. So now you can just work with what you have. So, I mean, if you, if you, if you exclude starting earlier, uh, which is already done, I would say, um, Probably, 
yeah, not doubling down on quality earlier. Like I did try to jump around and uh, and and do a lot of videos with like that were like just okay, like meh. Okay, let's put out a video. It's just fine. I would have rather said, okay, you know what? Let's spend double the time on this and uh, and make it very high quality, very well researched, or spend a lot of time into finding different connections between different ideas and topics to create something more unique. Uh, I feel like that would have uh, would have been uh, would have been useful, and also something that I need to that I actually I'm struggling right now is kind of structuring things and getting rid of perfectionism and actually being able to delegate stuff. Uh, I've now working with an editor and it's very hard. I, I, I'm, I wish I um, had started working with other people and uh, not be kind of a lone wolf mentality um, earlier in my, in my journey. Because, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in the DIY approach and, uh, you know, if I am uh, if I'm doing YouTube, I start by doing all the things, and I'm kind of able to do all the things, and then ideally you kind of uh, give editing away, or you give uh, I don't know negotiating deals away, or you know you give a newsletter away. Um, but probably, so I'm a big believer in doing the thing yourself, even not even though you're not the best at it, and you cannot be the best at 17 different things. Uh, but at the same time it leads to a lot of work where not only you don't like it, but you're not also good at it. Like for example, if I have to think about, I don't know. For example, if we take editing, which is both a creative endeavor, like there's some pieces where like, oh, I'm gonna do this cool thing and do this cool storytelling. So that's the, 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 the stuff that I appreciate or here, we're gonna do this animation. And then there's the other half of it, which is like, spending two hours dragging and dropping sound effects from one place to another. That's not stuff that I enjoy doing. That's not stuff where I can add any value and my time is better spent in other ways. So yeah, uh, I, I wish I had started getting other people uh, involved earlier, uh, especially on the editing front. Um, but still, I do recommend people uh, to start doing the thing on their own, unless you're, I don't know, a successful entrepreneur, they want to open a YouTube channel and they actually take it as a business and you have the financial means to hire somebody from the start. I, I would say doing the thing on your, um, yourself first also gives you an, a better idea of how to work with the person. Like a good example is I don't, in my job as a product manager, I, I work with a team of developers. Um, and I'm not a software engineer by trade, but I know how to code. I've done some coding in the past, so I have some idea of what it is to uh, to build some build a feature or how an API works, or have a rough idea of how, how complex things are. Does that mean that I'm the best engineer on the planet? Hell no. But now, having done the thing with my own hands, helps me now deal with the people that do the thing better than me. Let's stay on that for a, for a moment. Uh, do you have any more, uh, you know, tips and tricks for people that want to start a YouTube channel? So they're starting from scratch. Uh, one is something that you just said. So at the beginning, you have to do basically everything else. So the thumbnails and the editing and you know and the and the and the, the content itself. Um, what else? Do you have any? Tips and tricks, any cool suggestions for people that want to start a YouTube channel and they are just mm -hmm. uh, waiting or procrastinating? Uh, I would say just start. I mean, everybody says that, but it's true. Like, you, you can spend your time and listen to 500 podcasts like this one and, and buy free courses and, uh, you know, do the master class, but... You know, you can take a lot of master classes in football, but if you don't play football, <laughs> you're just not going to be good, right? So just start doing, making videos, start, create, start, and just accept that it's going to take a long time. And the first, it's not necessarily about time, really. It's, 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 it's about repetition. Like, it's going to take a lot of repetitions to actually get good. 
Uh, and it's not even necessarily about the number of videos to get good because it's uh, if I if I do a daily vlog, maybe it takes 500 daily vlogs to actually make some that are consistent and good enough so that I kind of, let's say, explode. Um, or um, if I'm making, uh, if I'm tomorrow, I'm going to leave my job and I'm going to do a hundred, I'm going to dedicate a hundred percent of my time to a new channel about something. Maybe it's going to take five high quality videos to then get decently good. And, and uh, uh, I feel like you, you have to have in mind the number of, like not only the number of views that a video has, but also the number of views or whatever the success metric is that something you make deserves, right? So, and it's true with anything. It's true for a YouTube video. It's true for a startup that you're building. It's true for an app uh, like the, 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 that you're uh, that you're coding. So, if I'm making a video and I, and I look back at like my first videos, I'm like, now I I have the eyes to say, okay, this deserves. A thousand views, three hundred views. It has three hundred views. It makes sense. Uh, and then along the way, you'll find, for example, some of the videos that that I made that I'm like, oh, actually, this is a very good one, and I feel like it has the potential to do much better than this. So, for example, those are the ones that I'm going to spend a lot of time uh, working on the thumbnail or title um, of those and trying different things. Uh, another tip that I would say that I would give is definitely packaging. So, especially on YouTube, where there's this idea of thumbnail and th uh, thumbnail and title, the packaging of how you how you frame things completely changes the the um, the narrative. And I like, give you a concrete example. There's this guy called Cash Jordan. He does New York City apartment tours. So he shows off like this loft or this whatever and it has the views of Empire State Building. Cool. Nice. So that the, the like taking stripping away everything else, the basic thing it shows you is an apartment. So the packaging can be tour of two bedroom apartment 75 square meters near Central Park with a photo of the living room, like probably with some IKEA couch in there. Boring, right? Uh so so and uh, what he does, for example, he is he one of his uh, he has these very creative titles. Like one of the on one of his titles is, for example, um, something along the lines of uh, "This is the best New York City apartment, but nobody wants it." And so you framed the same thing. Like you're gonna show off this apartment, but you framed it in a way that makes it interesting. It makes it different, and. That is because anyone, I mean, not really anyone, but a lot of other people in real estate could just do apartment tours. So what makes this special? So what's the way I can package this boring information in a non-boring way? And that's the same thing that I'm trying to do with tech. So like, to be honest, a lot of the stuff I talk about is boring as fuck. Like this company acquired that company. This thing came out and it's slightly better than the last one, you know? So I'm just trying to find a packaging that makes things interesting and you can uh, actually narrate them in an interesting way and creates tension and creates curiosity. It is very important. I will actually, like when I think about the last videos I make, I probably spend 30 or 40% of the time actually thinking about how to package stuff, which for me means title, thumbnail, and hook, so the first the intro of the video, and kind of the structure or how you structure it. Of course, it need to be coherent. Uh, and then the rest actually writing the, the content of the video. That's how how important it is. Hmm. Um, and that that's why, and it's not just YouTube, like if you, if you take uh, any kind of media, so let's take any science channel, any science publication, like, like uh, a TV program, this is all packaging because the real science, the real science is in scientific papers published by university with some abstract and some charts, and uh, they're probably unreadable by 99.9% .9 of people. So there's a whole industry that is built around, you know, taking science and making it interesting or uh, uh, making it approachable or, or telling it in a different way because the, 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 the content is basically the same, right? So it's just about how you frame it, how you put it. Uh, sometimes I've heard people saying that, um, oh, I'm not making content because my area 
uh, is boring. My industry is boring. The topic I like is boring. Uh, but actually, it's not. Uh, it depends how you frame it. And this is, uh, this is the key. I mean, it's a good thing. If your area is boring, you're sitting on an opportunity to make it not boring. Like, yeah. uh, if I take, I don't know, like everybody wants to cover exciting stuff or like, you know, uh, I'm not a big sports guy, but sports is exciting for a lot of people. So, and, and since it is exciting, a lot of people are going to make content about it. And, and I mean, there's been channels on TV that have been doing that for like 50 years. So, uh, that's going to have more competition. But if I'm, my passion is, I don't know, model trains or like now there's, for example, a lot of, uh, I'm seeing a lot of content about coffee and people that are like sharing their espresso setup and all that. I'm not really particularly into coffee, but I end up watching that. I don't know why. Um, but that is, is something that is potentially boring. Like, uh, you need to grind this to this and like 18 grams of coffee and 36 grams espresso. And, uh, and there are people that have, that make, make it actually interesting. Actually, the, the, the thing that I like the most about YouTube is that it makes me discover things and kind of niches that are they're just boring, but given that they are told by people in interesting ways, I end up getting passionate about it. Like one of the things was mechanical keyboards. At, at first I was like, is this really a thing? Like people buying and like building keyboards with parts and like lubing the switches and it just seems so stupid and, and it is boring. Like you need to get the case that fits and but I ended up watching so much content about it that now I built a, I spent an ungodly amount of money on a keyboard <laughs> and uh, uh, I now got my, my flatmate to get one as well. So uh, like in reality, most things are boring. Uh, and uh, actually, if you take something that is very niche and you're very passionate about and you just find a way to make it not boring, that's when you. I would. I would say it's actually easier and better to 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 be to like something and want to create content about something boring than something exciting. You have less competition. So, friends, uh, it's not about the topic. It's about how you frame it. Uh, look, Enrico, we usually end these conversations here with uh, two quick questions about one about tools, and one about uh, books. So, do you have any? Uh, books that you want to share with us, something that you are reading now or something that you really loved, I don't know, in the last couple of years or, I don't know, a book that was inspiring for you? Um, so when it comes to books, I really enjoyed the biography of Arnold Schwarzenegger. To me, is always one mm. of the people that inspired me a lot. So he has a new book that just came out. It is good, but I feel like his first one called Total Recall is like his life story. Uh, it's 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 better. I, I really like biographies and uh, hearing about the life of people. I'm now reading the book about Elon Musk. Uh, I I just started, so I um, I'll uh, I'll tell you how I how I what I think about it. <laughs> but now I let me think if there's anything else that's interesting. Um, Especially for content creators, there is a book called Show Your Work by Austin Kleon um, that's very much focused on the idea of, yeah, just showing your work and uh, the importance of sharing what you do, not just doing things behind the scenes. Uh, it's, it's a very small book. I don't have it here. I have it uh, back home in Italy. Uh, but it's... Um, it's a, it's a very small book, very short, but very, very powerful, I would say. Mm. Um, another one that comes to mind is, uh, I'm, I'm a big, I, I really like sci-fi books. So the Foundation series is mm. one of my uh, favorite ones by Asimov. I actually um, listened to the audiobook version while I was on my, uh, on a road trip. So it's like. 20 hours of, of all different audio books and all different chapters of the book. Uh, but that's that's a story that's uh, spread across a thousand years. And it basically tells you different moments across these thousand years that kind of all connect together into one big story. So uh, it's, it's, it's a fiction book, but I, it's, uh, I'm, and I'm usually not a big fan of it, like 80% nonfiction, 20% fiction, but that's one that I really, really enjoyed as a nice. sci-fi nice. nerd. Uh and you guys will find all the links in the description below. Um, what about tools? Do you have any tools that you want to share with us 
something that you maybe use in your you know in your day to day uh, job, something that is uh, very useful or important for you? Um, so I actually shared this in a video as well. Um, I. I like to use, to, to me, it's not really about the tools, but having a way to quickly capture stuff wherever you are. So I use TickTick for that. I have a, I have set it up on Android so that I have like, I'm on one tap and I can just write anything and click and just, I don't have to find and organize and find the folder and find the notes. I just write stuff and it goes in kind of my inbox of things. And so from there, usually once a day when I'm on my laptop, when I have more time, I then kind of you know direct things different ways. So if this is a note from a book, like this is a cool thought, I have a kind of a pills archive of pills of interesting stuff that I read or, or hear or listen. Um, if it's a uh, to-do, I, I put it in my to-dos. If it's a note about whatever, I put it in my notes in Notion. And then, yeah, having a system to kind of have more structured uh, stuff. I use Notion for that. So TikTok and Notion is my setup at the moment. Um, but for, yeah, for example, I, I like I'm able to now capture a lot more things because I don't have to think about oh I need to place it in this setup in this folder so it's just very quick and easy and even especially for video ideas that come maybe when you are like on the bike and it's raining and you need to just you know quickly um, put it on the phone um, so that that's my kind of notes taking information capturing setup uh i'm using arc as a browser that i really recommend it's mac only unfortunately but coming to windows i, I make a, the last video well, second to last video i made is about arc i feel it's, it's one of the best pieces of software that i've used um recently then um yeah so this i would say are tools that i recommend uh, let me think, is there anything else? Let me actually look at my task, task bar. <laughs> yeah, I saw the video about Arc. So now I want to try it. <laughs> um... Yeah, so those are the ones I recommend. Um, again, the tool is important, but it's more about how you use it and how it yeah. plays with everything else. Like, for example, uh, like you could very well use Apple Notes or some other. Yeah. It's just about how you organize. Uh, your life. I'm, I'm a, I really like craft in in digital products, so I really like those that are very well polished and very well thought out. Uh, but you can also do really well with basic Apple Notes, mm -hmm. or uh, it's just about finding your your system and just a nerd yeah. for good design. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, there you go. Where they can find you, follow you, what you do. You want to share any links with us? YouTube, Enrico Tartarotti. I have a newsletter called the Email Club where sometimes I share exclusive videos in there. Um, you can find it on my website, enricotartarotti.com. Instagram, I just share some like personal life, not really using it for sharing content that much now. Maybe we'll change it in the future, who knows? Uh, but if you want to follow me, follow, if you want to follow me there as well, uh, you can see more of my daily life. Cool, cool. And all the links are going to be in the description below, Enrico. Thank you so much for your time. It was great. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Raffaele.